Hello, my name is Andrew Just, and welcome to the version 10.2 release training for the Forecast Builder software. So with version 10.2, here are some of the highlights with it. The first is a variety of user look and feel changes. Mostly here, the GUI updates are going to be to clean up and make the, the MBM precipitation type step more friendly for the user. We also renamed the finalized step to integrity since finalized was sort of a misnomer being the fact that it happens early in the process. And then we shrank the weather step GUI as that's been a problem for many versions for forecast but almost dating back to the very beginning, uh, especially when no convective hazards are in effect. And this is an important change for the HCI um, system for AWIPS. We've also switched the names of the elements utilized in the MBM precipitation type step a lot of that's just to make them clear. For the Great Lakes offices, there's been inclusion of the initial advective wind filter uh, process developed in Detroit and really comes from feedback about that the winds and gusts were never high enough in the near shore. Um, you know, they would always be maximized in the offshore and would um, never get to the, sh the shoreline. And that's just because of the low resolution models. And of course, the MBM has a lot of that included as well. So this will be just a a little bit of a band-aid, if you will, to help improve the nearshore winds. There's been a configuration threshold added for POP, where QPF equals zero. Um, this is, comes from a lot of feedback requesting that the ability to have QPF equals zero, where POP was uh, 15. I will note that forecast builder here is going to follow strictly here to the directive, um, 10201 Appendix A, which says, you know, the only consistency checks are QPF equals zero, where POP equals zero and QPF to be greater than zero where POP is greater than equal to 50. Also to simplify that weather step GUI, we uh, derive the QPF intensity in the days four through seven from either the forecast QPF grids if they're present, or for those sites that only do QPF out to day three, then it will read in the WPC QPF to help with that intensity calculation. It's also fixed a weather key threshold warning that was set at 127, bump that up uh, to 256 is what GFE can handle. As you can, again, note that the threshold was lower, so again, we fixed that. We've updated the, ha the hazard builder grid calculation for excessive rainfall for WPC's excessive rainfall outlook changes. And then several small updates here to the blow and snow code. Um, for example, fixing patchy capping that occurs when there's limited snow on the ground. So let me talk a little bit more about the unconditional precipitation type step updates and then um, the next couple of slides will actually go through a little example of what the GUIs look like. So again, this, this whole step is only applicable to when you're using MBM as the P-type approach. Again, we renamed the P-type elements utilized due to confusion in training. And so the rename is set as this, the POT type is now the WX type. And that's really, I mean, the, the, the that's the type that you're gonna see in the weather grid. So we figured let's name it with WX and it helps reduce some of the confusion between various probably type, probably thunder, um, probably precipitation. So it just again clears that all up. We've also provided a weather preview option and that will not plot thunder over everything if winter P types are present. That way you can really see how do all the various precipitation types align if they're all on top of each other like you would see in the weather grid. And then added ability to select the surface wet bulb um, for snow creation. And then again, overall the GUI changes here to help guide the forecaster through this step. Because if you remember that this step was, you had everything thrown up in one single GUI and it, it, it seemed to get a little bit um, distracting, not, not, again, not user friendly. So let's go through and look at the GUIs. So here's the opening GUI when you first get to the unconditional precipitation types step. You now, it will open up to this create section. And here you have a lot, again, the same functionality we had before. For example, where you can init the weather types there shown on the left to, to change the uh, conditional grids that the MBM version 4.0 provides and make them um, into unconditional. And that still has to be run. Um, that's, that's normal here. Um, you get the selections there for edit area versus time. Uh, uh, and a time range, you know, how you want to um, deal with thunder. And then there's that addition of the sur snow surface wet bulb temperature, and you can adjust that. And then where if you want to do some stuff with forcing um, 
forcing snow and more stuff's written here so I won't delve into that. So after you're done with the create step we move on to the edit and here too you've got some of the same things as I mentioned in the uh, before with the forecast builder GUI say from version 10.1 and, and previously you still have the options there to copy a selection to probably a type just like you had um, and again the copy pop to selection and then there's various edit and tips here again if you uh, move over like this uh, question mark shown on the GUI and finally we jump to the last the last steps of like consistency and fixing tools um, they're present here so again it's it's, it's nice step-by-step -step process kind of goes behind the framework of forecast builder that it's step-by-step -step. you build up and this will help bring you the best you know consistent um, unconditional precipitation types and that everything works within your existing um, existing grids so let's go to a different topic. Let's talk a little bit about hourly temperature and the MBM. Uh, I bring this up because the for Forecast Builder's hourly T tool, um, we've had some feedback on it and like it may not be working correctly and, and whatnot. Uh, and a lot of that stems back to the MBM max T, min T, and the maximum of its hourly temperature and, and how it impacts the tool. So. Uh, Back a couple months ago, um, there was some webinars given on this whole topic about hourly temperature and that this was a, an issue that um, people want rectified. So you may be wondering what what's causing these? And it's really three, three things going on here. The first is time ranges. In the CONUS, the MBMs, max T and min T cover four time zones, um, whereas the WFO max T, min T is so just over a shorter period and that's define as directive the mbm you know kind of has to do this they have to cover all the time zones and in that process if you have non-diurnal curves then you're going to end up with uh, a max t or a min t that's outside the time range of the wfo i would say that when it comes to the differences between max min hourly t and max t min t this is the root um the, the most often cause yeah. since this is going to happen you know sp you know, spring uh, fall and winter seasons. Also, there's another issue is the data. Beyond 36 hours, the MBM only has and provides three hourly temperature data. Um, and so if the maximum uh, happens, say, between one of those three hours, you're not going to capture that. And then finally, bias correction. So hourly temperature is bias corrected. And if you look over, a you know, a couple of months, which the MBM does, you're going to predominantly see a diurnal diurnal trend, even through, you know, the fall, winter, spring, when you can have non-diurnal effects, majority of the time you're still going to be diurnally driven. Um, but the max TMNT doesn't, doesn't have that included, so there's another spot where you can get some differences there between max minority and the MBM max TMNT. Again, the MBM developers, they are aware of this. They are trying to work on this on this issue. Uh, it's certainly not an easy one to solve. Another discussion um, point here, and this is sort of looking a little bit at the future here with, for, with Forecast Builder, but I wanted to mention here, you know, Forecast Builder up to this point has generally applied a deterministic approach you know, if you look at the step-by-step -step process of Forecast Builder, we, we go from foundation and, and some sort of environmental grids that could be snow level or for the offices using some top-down approach. And those help derive the precipitation types and the snow isocumes. I mean, this still sort of applies in the MBM. While the MBM, you know, we have um, Forecast Builder plops in the MBM precipitation types, we still have a deterministic approach then to take those and derive snow and isocumes. But... As we know, there could be varying degrees of uncertainty in every grid element. Uh, you know, forecasts in a single, you know, temperature grid, you know, even a, several hours out to, you know, 184 hours, you know, the, there'd be a lot of uncertainty throughout that whole time range. As an agency, we're moving probabilistically and have listed several of them here. In fact, take a look at the MBM um, 401, a little change here, but I mean, still same concept here with 4.0 that you can end up with probabilities of freezing rain or sleet or, you know, at, at with temperature forecasts that seem 
a bit odd to have that probability, but it's because the distribution in the uh, in the ensemble favors some probabilities to be included. So in terms of how we're going to move forecast builder probabilistically, you know, I'm just showing an example here at right. You know, our grids, we're, we're, we're single value. This is a snow amount uh, forecast. There's, there's a way that we can make them better represent probabilistically, and that's through evolving some of our internal meteorological consistency rules, you know, that, that as long as some of these derived parameters like precipitation type, snow, ice, and that are within various spectrums of our foundation grids, then it's okay. In this version 10.2 release, we've actually started this process and we've got a configuration option that allows the precipitation type to fit within the MBM temperature standard deviation. Uh, right now it's turned off because this is a little bit of a different uh, a different feel where you're allowed to have, you know, freeze and rain mentioned when your temperatures are in the, you know, mid thirties, if that's allowed for your, uh, if, if the MBM temperature standard deviation supports that, or you have, you know, rain mentioned when the temp temperatures are in the mid to upper twenties, for example. But as we look to head to version 10.3, we're going to expand this capability to snow amount and ice accumulation. But in this case, um, have them populated from MBM with maintain ratios to QPF. And, and a lot of that's to set us up for 4.1 when there's a huge ensemble available now that's in, incorporated to help populate uh, to create the snow and ice. Um, you know, if you look at our current process, we take a deterministic QPF, maybe a probabilistic P-type, a deterministic LSR, SLR, all to come up with a snow and ice, which then ends up being deterministic. So again, it's it's whole concept here moving probabilistically. Since I mentioned MBM 4.1 a few times already, uh, let's you know let's talk a little bit about what Forecast Builder is looking like ahead for that. You know, we, we got the MBM 4, version 4.1 in AWIPS at a right time here during winter. Um, and 4.1, we know, is going to have um, a change with the probabilities to go from conditional to unconditional. And that's definitely going to change Forecast Builder because Forecast Builder is right now only capable of handling the conditional variety. Um, albeit, what has been developed here for the 10 version 10.0 series is perfect. Um, we have an unconditional step, so it may not be as big of a change as what we would have had to do um, prior to this version 10 series. Again, check out the MBM 401 winter overview presentation for a lot more information about version 401 in winter, uh, all, all things winter for that matter. As far as using MBM 40 or 4041 in operations, there are some gotchas here to be aware of. Again, precipitation type is completely incompatible with Forecast Builder as of right now. And availability. MBM 41 runs on the parallel W costs, and that can be susceptible to outages for a variety of different reasons. So I recommend following the WhatsApp viewer for announcements. And with that, and this concludes the version 10.2 series training. Uh, again, there's various different ways you can contact the Forecast Builder group if you have more questions on it. Um, just you know, feel free to put a chat in the chat room, uh, post a, forum, a message on the forum for the VLAB site, or even the I would say the best way is just send an email. Um, whenever you're thinking about something Forecast Builder related, post an email. There's the email address nws.forecastbuilder.noaa.gov. Again, thank you for listening.